Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, back with another Halloween card. I'm actually remaking a card that I had published in the Scrapbook and Cards Today fall issue, and I will hopefully try to remember to link to that in the description box below the video. So it was a slimline card, of course, using some really fun colors, and that's what I'm starting with here. I have some Simon Says Stamp 120 pound white cardstock here and I am blending some Distress Oxide inks onto it. I highly recommend, if you haven't tried blending inks onto Simon's 120 pound white cardstock, highly recommend trying it out, especially Oxide inks. I, this combo for me is just perfect. Um, Bristol Smooth cardstock is a, a great one for dye inks to blend on um, because the Bristol Smooth has a like that extra coating. Personally, I find that I struggle more with oxide inks on Bristol Smooth. I think the coating just resists the ink a little bit too much and I just find that I, I don't get the results I want. And then I started blending or using Simon's cardstock whenever, it was a long time ago. And I still get comments from people asking about like ink blending that because they struggle with it. Something I've always struggled with. It's been years of practice and all that stuff. But my personal favorite combo when it comes specifically to Distress Oxide inks is either the Simon 120 pound white, or if I'm wanting that fun, more neutral look, I'll do Nina Desert Storm. That's just a totally different look though. And then the other thing I do is I have my ink blending tools. I did a video, again, over a year ago, whenever it was, on how I store my little blending foams because I keep a blending foam for each color. I don't keep a handle for each color because I don't have the space, otherwise I would. But I have a blending foam for each color and they are like saturated with ink. So that way, one, I don't have to press my blending foams as much into the ink pads because there's already ink left in them. And then using those blending foams and this cardstock just with oxide inks is just perfect. When it comes to dye inks, my, you know, my regular distress inks, or other dye-based inks, I prefer like blending brushes. But for oxides, this is how I get the best blends. And it just lays down like butter. The only thing I need to remember to do is to take chip, the chip sapphire there. I need to re-ink that one. <laughs> I've been using that a lot the last couple of months. So I blend it on my colors. I'm working on my little Waffle Flower Water Media Mat because I like how it kind of grips the cardstock. And I started with the picked raspberry distress oxide there on the far left. And then I worked my way into seedless preserves and then chip sapphire and then black soot. And blend them all in together, even though, as always, and I always complain about this, my camera makes it looks like it makes it look like my blends are not as blended as they are. <laughs> I don't know why it does that. I find that so odd. Because I'll literally look at the uh, monitor of my camera while I'm blending and it looks completely different on camera than it does in real life. It's weird, but you guys see it in the end pictures and all that stuff. It looks fine. So I did my blend and then I put this in my splat box and I'm of course going to add splatter. So I have a little mini mister bottle here with uh, Ranger's Perfect Pearl powder in the Perfect Pearl. And I keep that in the bottle with water. So you just have to shake it up really well because that powder just settles to the bottom always. So I shook, shook it up really well. And then what I really like to do is just to take the nozzle, like take the lid right off the bottle after I've shaken it up. And then I just dip a paintbrush into it and use that to splatter. And I just use one of my cheapy brushes, like my little Nouveau brush pack. I use one of those brushes only because Perfect Pearl powders do have resins in them. That's what helps them to, once they're like activated with water, um, that's what helps them like bond to the paper and whatnot. And I don't want to risk ever wrecking like my really nice brushes so yeah that's people ask about that too what i use for splatter um any of my like nouveau cheapy brushes or my little ranger pack i call them cheapy brushes because if it's like you know the ten dollar range for 10 brushes or however many you get um totally worth it so those are the ones i use and it hasn't wrecked them but i'd rather be safe than sorry so anywho did all that splatter and then I die cut that panel with the largest of the Simon Says Stamp Slimline Nested Rectangles. And if you missed a previous video when I went on about that, no, I did not find the set I lost <laughs> or misplaced. I don't know where it went. Um, yep, yeah, it, it, it 
hitched a ride somewhere. I don't even know what that set did, but I ordered a new set. So yeah, usually when you order a new of whatever you've misplaced, the other thing shows up. I'm going to go on a complete side rant. So anyway, back to the card. <laughs> So I die cut it and set it on the side. The sentiments are from the Simon Says Stamp hand lettered Halloween. This came out a year or a couple years ago. It's one of my favorites. Uh, 2018, so a couple years ago. I've used it in a bunch of Halloween videos. It's just love it. So I white heat embossed a couple sentiments. One, the little happy sentiment I just trimmed down with my paper trimmer. The Halloween, there's a coordinating wafer die set for this um, sentiment set. So I die cut that Halloween with the coordinating wafer die. And then my card base is black cardstock that I cut to seven inches. So it's going to be seven inches by eight and a half inches. So then I will score this at three and a half inches and that will make this a three and a half inch by eight and a half inch slimline card. So I just line that up in my little uh, score buddy here and then flip it around because the score buddy is technically too small for slimline cards. But that is one tool that I I think I got rid of years ago, the big, the big score pal, um, had that for years. And then they came up with a score buddy, which was beyond perfect. And then, yeah, it just, it, the score buddy still works for this. You just have to flip the cardstock around. So anywho, <laughs> scored my card base. And then I pulled out the friendly ghosts wafer die set, which I've used on at least one of my other Halloween videos this year. This is a set I've used many, many times over the years. And I die cut those friendly ghosts using some of Simon's white glitter paper. So I've got everything die cut. Now it's just time to start assembling everything. So for that Halloween sentiment, I die cut a couple more without stamping them or anything. I die cut a couple more from that same pink cardstock. And then I'm going to adhere the top layer to that. So that gives it that dimension. So I don't have to sit and fiddle with little bits of foam tape and that sort of thing. So that just gives it that dimension that I want. So once I've got those adhered together, I can start um, adhering all the elements to my card. So I'm going to adhere my sentiments and then all of these little ghosts that I die cut from that white glitter paper, those I'm going to pop up with just little bits of um, thin 3D foam squares. So it pops them up a little bit, but those aren't as thick as standard. Um, the regular th foam squares are just, you know, standard dimensionals, that sort of thing. So I'm going to pop several of these onto my card, just kind of making it look like they're floating into this fun, spooky, pinky purple sky. So I adhered all those into place. And then um, I'd also white heat embossed a couple more sentiments from that hand lettered Halloween set onto those same um, plum and pink card stocks. The one I die cut with a coordinating wafer die and the other one I trimmed down just like I did for the sentiment on the front. I'm going to adhere those to the inside of this card base. When I have dark cardstock card bases like this, I either line the inside with a lighter cardstock, like white or just a light color that coordinates, or I will just keep the card base as is with really dark cardstock. And then when I go to write to the recipient, I'll just use like a gel pen or a glitter pen, anything that will show up on dark cardstock. So most of the time, I'll use some form of gel pen. So, and it just kind of keeps the fun going having you know a black card base like this so after i did that my of course i'm going to add just a little bit more bling so i have my studio Cadia iridescent star crystals another absolute absolute favorite of mine that i've used a million times absolutely love these so sprinkle those throughout this entire card front and then i just adhere them into place with dabs of the craft tacky glue just picking them up with my jewel picker press them into the glue and then just gotta let that glue dry. And then once this card was complete, I paired these with just some Simon Says Stamp cotton candy pink um, slimline envelopes, just to kind of pull in a bit more pink, cause why not? It's an unexpected color for Halloween and I just love it. So that was my video for the moment. As always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I'll have a supply list. I'll link to all the supplies I used. So you can check that out in the description box below the video if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.